Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. As always, thank you for checking out this video. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of guitar related content as well as recording content that's kind of geared towards guitarists. So if that sounds like something that would be helpful for you or that you're interested in, definitely hit subscribe. I just finished up a project where I was recording guitar, pedal steel, and mandolin for a buddy of mine. He's producing a four song EP for a singer songwriter and asked me to play on it. And I've been doing a lot more of this recently um, with the pandemic and even before that I've been doing remote tracking for people and then sending files over to them. This kind of seems like the modern way to make music, whether you're writing or producing a demo or the final product. More and more people are remote tracking in their own home studios and sending files back and forth and collaborating in this way. So today we're gonna kind of take a look at that process. We're gonna talk about some of the technical aspects of it as well as just kind of my mindset about it and some things that I've learned uh, in doing it. Before we get into that, I wanna talk a little bit about the sponsor of this video, DistroKid. Now, when DistroKid reached out to me about doing a sponsored video, it was kind of a no-brainer. I already use DistroKid, and if you were to just ask me, how do I release music? How do I get it on all the major streaming platforms? I would tell you to go check out DistroKid. It's super affordable, and they make it really easy to release music. One of my favorite features of DistroKid is the fact that you can release unlimited music. You're not paying per release, and even if you just release one project, it's still more affordable than most of the other services out there. One feature that DistroKid offers that really pertains to what we're talking about today is something called splits. And this basically means that if you collaborate on a song with somebody and you agree to split different percentages of the revenue from that song, that it's super easy to put that into DistroKid and they automatically distribute that revenue. They don't take any percentage of the money that you make off your music. They're just distributing that to where it needs to go. There's lots of flexibility with splits. You can have unlimited number of collaborators. You can divide those percentages up however you need to. You can go back and change them. You can add collaborators. Whatever you need to do, it's super flexible and super easy to make sure that everybody is getting their fair share. If you want more info on splits or just DistroKid in general, check the links in the description below. There's also a link down there for 7% off your first year's membership. just heard a piece of the demo that I created for this video. We're going to kind of use it to discuss some of these ideas. Say I'm a producer and I live in Oklahoma City. I've got this track I've created. I've got drums, bass, and roads. Those parts are pretty locked in and I want to take it to the next level. I just happen to know a fantastic guitar player who lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and I want to get him to put some stuff down on it. What's the best way for me to get this to him to have him track on it? Now, depending on your workflow, depending on how you're working, there are different ways to do this. I could send him the Pro Tools session file, um, you know, or if I'm working in Logic or different DAW, I could just send him the session. Um, but this isn't always gonna work. Maybe that person works in a different DAW or maybe they have a different version or there's just all kinds of complications that could bring up. So we're really just gonna discuss what I've found to be the most universally compatible way to do this. And that's to essentially bounce down a version of the song, bounce down a mix of the song and send that to the person you want to track on it. There are a few things to consider when you are bouncing down a song or sending someone a mix. They're really easy, but I still see guys miss them all the time. Um, kind of the main two things that we're talking about here is bouncing your tracks down from zero or making sure that they are bounced on beat. Um, if you're you know, using a metronome or you track to a click and then also just naming the file correctly. Um, a lot of times what I see guys do is they just name the file, but there's no info there. Um, where it, is it makes it a lot easier when you're naming your file when you bounce it down to put the file rate um, you know in this case it's going to be 48k and 32-bit float and then the BPM which in this case is at 120 by putting those two pieces of information just on the file name it makes sure that whoever tracks to it can you know 
get it on beat, they can get their click lined up, and then also are going to send you files that match at the same you know sample rate and all that stuff. Um, and it just makes life a lot easier to put that info in the title of the track when you bounce it out. Now, as far as bouncing things at zero, I've got D my DAW, I've got Pro Tools pulled up here, and we're gonna talk about that um, a little more specifically so you can see what I'm talking about. Here I've got my three files. I've got drums, bass, and roads. Um, I'm using Easy Drummer for my, my drums. A lot of you guys always ask on my videos what I use um, for drums. I'm using Easy Drummer. Um, three basic tracks here, and you'll notice that they all start on bar five. So I've got a little, you know, a little lead up time here. I've got a count marked uh, two bars in. This is just so I can start it there and I hear two bars of click and then everything comes in. Now, what I see guys do is that they might just bounce this track. They might just put the cursor wherever and then, you know, bounce a mix or send me a mix. And so in Pro Tools, at least, you know, if I put the cursor here and I hit bounce, um, then it is going to bounce it from wherever the cursor is. And if I did it there, then it's not going to be on beat. And if I dropped it into my DAW, then it's, you know, I might have my BPM correct but it's not going to be where it needs to be so i'm either going to start at the very beginning on bar one here and do my bounce or i'm going to make sure that you know i'm right on this third bar um, and so that it it bounces down for me typically what i like to do is i like to start it at you know zero or this one right here and then that way whoever sends me files they can make sure that all their files start at zero and everything lines up well Here's an example of bouncing it correctly and bouncing it incorrectly. On this top file, we have it bounce correctly. You see everything coming in on the fifth bar here. Um, if I play it from this fourth bar, then you'll hear four beats and then everything coming in. Everything's lined up and it sounds like it should. Now, the second file down here was bounced incorrectly. I just put the cursor in a random place and bounced it as it was. And we'll hear how it is not supposed to sound here. The track doesn't line up with the click track. Now, I could move it around and I could get it really close or I could you know, visually zoom in and get that lined up better, but it's probably not going to be exactly right. And so if I were to track to that, if I, you know, as a guitar player were to track to that file, then it's not going to be exactly right. And then the person I'm sending the files to would have to line it up. And again, there's just room for error there and it's not gonna be quite right. So whenever you're bouncing files to send to somebody to have them track on it make sure that you bounce it on beat that it's going to line up with the click track that everything starts at zero You just heard the track, I've put down a few parts on it now, and we're gonna kind of talk about the other side of it, the side of tracking to a track that you've received. Now, I think the biggest part of this, honestly, especially when you're first getting started, is communication. You need to figure out what kinds of parts the person you know that created the track or that you're working for wants, what kind of tones are they looking for, are there certain references that they're going after? Are there certain melodies that they're trying to get? Um, you know, I'm all about information in this stage of the game. It's like, you know, what do you want to hear from me? Like, what can I do to make this track what it is that you're going after? And so I'm asking a lot of questions. Um, you know, sometimes people have really strong references. They have really strong ideas as far as what they want on a track. And sometimes they give me a lot of freedom and I can just kind of do what I hear, do what I feel like is best for the track. And that's always a lot of fun, but honestly, sometimes I feel like I spend up 
end up spending a ton of time on it because I'm like, oh, what if I try this? What if I try this? And I end up giving them tons of options and all that kind of stuff. But it gets easier as you do it more and more to kind of figure that out. And especially after you work with certain people a lot, you kind of know what they're looking for. Um, you know what's going to work well and you know what's going to help the track be the best that it can be. Now let's take a look at what tracks I have and kind of talk through a few things to think about when you're doing it um, from a technical standpoint. Just some of the practical technical things that I do in Pro Tools, um, you know, getting the files ready to send and just things to think about. So here you can see I've got the uh, bounce at the top. This is the track that I was sent. It's labeled, you know, 48K, 32 bit, 120 BPM. That made it super helpful to drop in. I have all the info that I need. And then below it here, I have a guitar one and two. This is a kind of a picking rhythmic double that's in the first part. And then I have this single note um, kind of melody that I've labeled delay guitar. All of these are my amps running direct using two note captor. And so I'm using the wall of sound to run uh, my own IRs. And then as we go down, we've got a, what I called a funky guitar, which is the kind of Strat chorus thing. Big guitar is just some big rhythm guitars. And then I have an acoustic here as well. The um, big rhythm guitars and the acoustic are doubled. So as you can see, you know, I've got several different parts going on, several different things going on. So some things to think about. So ultimately when I send these files to someone, I want to have them all start at the same place. And so what I'm gonna need to do, at least in Pro Tools, to be able to do this, I'm either going to need to bounce each track down individually, um, or I'm going to need to uh, consolidate the files and, and send them um, in, in that manner. Um, I'm gonna show you guys one thing kind of to explain that a little better, but ultimately it depends on what DAW you're, you're working in. Um, there are different ways to do this. Um, even in Pro Tools, there are different ways to do this and quicker ways, depending on how many files you have and all that. So I'm not gonna go super into that, but the key thing to remember here again is to have all the files start at the same place. And for me, I'm typically going to have them all start wherever the track that I was sent starts, you know? So on this one, it starts here at, you know, the downbeat or the, the very beginning at, at one, the downbeat of this first measure or zero. And so I want all of these tracks that I've recorded, I ultimately want them all to start at zero. That way, when they bring them in to their session after I've delivered them, that, you know, they just drop in and they all sync up. Now, as you can see from here, they don't all start there, you know? These all, I've kind of trimmed these up and cleaned these up, and so these all start right here at the beginning, and then the parts that come in on the second half, they all kind of start here. So that's what I mean by consolidate. I basically have to make these files longer so that they all start at zero. Um, in Pro Tools, what I'll do is I would, typically I'd probably double these. I'm not gonna do that for now, but, um, I'm just gonna select all of these files and then in Pro Tools, it's Shift Option 3 and that creates these files like this. So they all start here at the very beginning. You can see they're, they're all starting there. And then that way when I deliver these files, you know, they'll drop in and work seamlessly. Now I'm gonna undo that because I do wanna comment on one thing that I did here. Um, typically I don't recommend doing this, but for this, just because I was um, bouncing it down. It's just an example. I faded these files out here. So you can see I've drawn in these fades. Typically, I would not suggest doing that for files that you're delivering someone. Let them, you know, make the fade how they want to. I'm not going super in depth about the technical aspects of bouncing files or exporting files because that's going to differ from each DAW, right? There are different ways to do that and um, it's different in all of them. But I will say that you need to make sure that if you're using a um, an IR you know, plugin like I am, that that is getting printed on to the file that you're sending. So that's one thing I have to do. Um, you know, I'm having to bounce the files with that sound imprinted on there. Or if you're using like a signature plugin, for instance, on this song, I've got that chorusy guitar. I track that mono, but I'm using a stereo chorus from Eventide on that. So, um, you know, for me, I'm going to print that sound so that when I deliver the file, it has the chorus on it. Because if I were to just, you know, um, export it without that, you know, it wouldn't quite sound the same and it wouldn't be what I intended it to be. Now, another option is that I could send that along 
without the chorus on it and with the chorus on it. So there's two options. But, you know, ultimately that's up to your discretion. But, you know, having, you know, using plugins and printing those onto what you're sending in the final product is something to definitely be aware of. Now, generally speaking, when I'm doing parts like this, you know, I'm trying to give people some simple parts, some basic, you know, rhythm parts, but then also some of these more color parts. And again, it's all about communication. It's all about what the producer or the artist that you're working with is looking for. And so, you know, just communicating with them, seeing what they need. Are they trying to keep it, you know, the parts minimal? Are they only trying to get one or two really great parts? Or do they want a lot of parts? So they want a lot of options. One thing that I'll do on certain types of parts or say there's a guitar solo on a song is that I will send multiple options. So I might send, you know, three options of a solo or maybe I have a couple of different um, approaches to a rhythm part. And so I might send them, you know, a couple of takes of that. Or if there's a part that, um, you know, that I feel like they might want to kind of comp from, they might want to take a piece of one take and a piece of another take, I might send them multiple takes so they can kind of pick and choose what they want. Again, ultimately, I'm just trying to give them um, what's going to make the track the best. And sometimes giving them a few options is super helpful. So the last thing that I'll mention as far as delivering files, you know, once, however you do it, um, once you have all of these files, you know, exported or bounced or, um, you know, however you're delivering them, you always want to make sure that you have things labeled really well. As you can see here, I've got, you know, guitar one, guitar one double, delay guitar, funky. I would probably add guitar on the end of that just to make, make sure it didn't get mixed up with something else. Um, you know, big guitar one, big guitar one, double, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, labeling these things, I would get rid of, you know, you can see on these names, it has like underscore zero three, underscore zero one. I would try to get rid of all of that and just make it as clean as possible so that it's super straightforward. It looks tidy and professional and um, is easy for the producer or the artist to drop in and get to work. That's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you for watching. I tried to hit the high points in all of this. There's a lot to cover. Um, so if you have any questions, if I missed anything, definitely leave me a comment below. Also, a big thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. If you are looking to release music online, DistroKid's the way to do it. And especially if you are collaborating with people, you're writing with people, and you need a way to split the revenue super easy and efficiently, then DistroKid offers splits, which is super convenient. So again, check the links in the description for more info on DistroKid. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.